Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and I'm back with another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'm ready to finally reveal sort of the secrets behind how I paint my foreground rocks. Stuff like this, this, and this. Stick around. So for today's tutorial, you're going to need a handful of things. One, some type of painting you're going to be working on. A flat or bright brush. Golden's light molding paste. Now you can use some other variations, but this one is the one I use and it's the one I highly recommend. And lastly, a hell of a lot of patience. Okay, so in order to show you really what I'm doing here today, for the first part of this tutorial, I have to angle this camera down to the side. Now, as you might already be able to tell, I've got a few rocks uh, down here in the sort of center area. And these are my ones that are foreground, but still kind of leaning towards the back. And with those, what I did is a mix of the micaceous iron oxide, as well as some fine pumice gel, as well as some color, to kind of brush on some areas of relatively thick paint. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing with the uh, front rock as well, but this light molding paste is super thick. Uh, it is also super lightweight, which is why they call it light. Uh, and it holds the most ridiculously high peaks that you can ever imagine. And what I've been doing with this for the past couple of years, uh, that's something I, when I first picked this stuff up, I'm like, okay, I think I understand how I can use this. Uh, and, and I kind of figured it out pretty quick, but it took a while to kind of master it up uh, to where I was sort of real proficient with it. Where you brush apply it, let it dry completely, that's where the patients come in, and then dry brush on top of it. I actually have a video on the channel already called uh, something like using light molding paste where I kind of talk about this technique a little bit, but it wasn't super developed at the time that I made that. So let's start by mixing up some uh, ba what I just call base color. So I've got a little bit of my gray mix already. I'm going to need a decent amount of this stuff. Tends, you tend to need a lot. If you have a custom sort of homemade molding paste that you use, that could work too. Um, the joint compound versus molding paste video seems to be collecting some comments currently about uh, people using uh, everything from like baby powder to joint compound or to whatever to make just different homemade texture pastes. And while those are uh, interesting if you're on a budget, um, they're not light, they're probably not real sufficient and light fast, and not super archival, so generally speaking it's still good to use uh, just regular stuff to be sure your paintings are going to be holding up over time. When I say sufficient and light fast, what I'm talking about is uh, get some black in here. What I'm talking about is just, uh, it, it's not going to yellow over time, it's not going to deteriorate, at least not as fast as uh, regular acrylic would. You're looking about longevity and uh, the ability to kind of really preserve the stuff that you're making. Now your base color actually doesn't matter too, too much, uh, but I like to be get at least sort of close to the color I'm going to be using. So that's a nice huge blob of that. I'm just going to sit this over here. I don't know how, how well you'll be able to see that, but it should be decent. So I'm actually going to get uh, slightly smaller bright, I think. Uh, I'm actually, you know what, I've got one in my water I can use. Now it should be noted that it's better to use a slightly older brush for this because this stuff really kind of sticks in your bristles and it can ruin your brush pretty quick, which I think is what happened to this one. It's really fraying out quite a bit. So a lot of people when they paint rocks, they want to use knives. Uh, which work, don't get me wrong, uh, but I found that uh, knife painting rocks, it, it leaves a lot to be desired. You can have so much more control with your brush. Um, so that's why I suggest using a brush rather than a knife. And what I'm basically doing is what I've some, sort of come to call paint sculpting. Um, it's laying on sort of these thick areas of paint and then just kind of slowly moving them around uh, to the shape that you want them but then not being afraid to leave some texture. They, you, to, to some degree, and, and it also, also I should mention, don't get water. Don't, don't dip your brush in water. This isn't so much a dry brush technique, but the whole point is that you don't want to smooth out the texture that you have. And if you add water, you're going to smooth out your texture. And it's like, well, you've kind of lost the point of doing this then. So 
this whole section here, I can here I'll, I'll I'll actually smooth it out just to show you. So I smooth it out, um, and then it's like okay, what do I do? It's not it's not smooth. Well, as long as it's still wet, you can kind of work stuff back in. I actually like really kind of holding back far on the brush to just kind of get some really haphazard textures in here. And I know this probably won't make a ton of sense right now, but as soon as this dries, as soon as we start dry brushing on top of this, you're going to see that every uh, little weird brush stroke we had um, is going to come out, and, and it's going to come out beautifully. Um, all right, I got to, excuse me, I'm going to lift this so I can actually see the side. Sorry that I can't show that, but I still want this painting to look all right. This, this, this is not just a demo painting. This is This is something that's going to be... You know, going in my sale pile, so maybe <laughs> if I if I don't like it too much, it'll go in the sale pile. But I but I need to get this painting done, so I gotta at least concentrate on some stuff. And this paste kind of really builds up, as you can see here, really kind of builds up in the brush here. Which is why it's better to use an older brush for this. I mean, it still rinses out. I mean, it's, it's acrylic like anything else is, but still. <laughs> and uh, I, I should mention here that um, it's very easy to go overboard with this stuff. I did a painting uh, in 2015, I think, and I used it everywhere, and it looked terrible. Um, so it's like, it's like, okay, if you're going to use this specifically for rocks, do it for like foreground rocks. Make, make sure this is like your last upper layer. Because um, that really ends up being just a nice sort of special effect at the end. I'm going to get a bit more here. I kind of want it to flare out a little with the base, where the grass is going to kind of grow up next to it. But I still want some of those textures underneath the grass. And this is really, it's it's not a, I would say this is definitely not a, uh, a technique for uh, the average beginner, like if you've been painting a while, feel free to try this, but uh, I wouldn't suggest this as a go-to, um, especially if you're not used not used to uh, painting rocks normally, I'd say. Um, I'm really just kind of sharing my own little technique today that I've developed, because I think it's really fun. Yeah, so relate, so the, the whole point of, of uh, I would say, again, patience, and we have to let this dry before we do anything. You cannot work this wet into wet. All these textures, all these little peaks, they absolutely have to be dry before uh, you start working. Because if you don't wait and you work wet into wet, you're going to lift all that texture up, um, and it's just not going to not going to look good. I've tried it; it doesn't <laughs> really work. I mean, you can kind of work when it's a little tacky, but I, I would I would suggest not doing that. So I'm just really kind of going to town. And once it's sort of all on there, you can work with it a little bit more and do that little bit of extra sort of paint sculpting. It's really easy to pull stuff away, too. you got to really be, really have a light touch. If, if you're really used to pushing hard with your brush, you got to get away from that because uh, that won't work with this. You'll probably end up using, or, or you'll just end up using a, way more paint than you need to. I mean, granted, you're using a lot already, but... Okay, that's really thick up here. I almost want to pull some aside here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I gotta do the top now. <laughs> so again, angling up. I'm one of those weird artists, you know, I paint the, the sides with every bit as detail as everything else. 
And I'll spend an hour just detailing the sides, <laughs> despite the fact that they really don't need it. Alright, so, right? Okay, so now we actually can rinse our brush, which I'm going to do on the side here. Like so. Now again, we have to let this dry. We have to. You cannot... You cannot work wet into wet, so... Uh, I'm actually not sure how long it's going to take to dry. I usually, when I do this, I just wait overnight, but it's the morning and I want to get this painting done today. Uh, so I'm probably going to be back in anywhere from five to eight hours to work on this again. Um, so just kind of bear that in mind. If you're going to be using this technique, um, do it, and then if you have other stuff to work on, do that. Um, because you're not going to be able to touch it for a while. And one more time, I just want to zoom in here to really show you this texture. I mean, this is, this is thick, thick paint here. So one, don't touch it, it's wet. <laughs> and two, brush apply because if you're knife applying you're not going to get this all these little variations in here all these little bumps and that's exactly what you want for this technique to work all right i'm back and it's actually been a couple of days since uh, i first put this layer on i did sort of time it out though and this layer of the paste took about six hours or so to dry to the point where i would want to work on it again but some came up and i couldn't and uh just now getting around to it so you know giving giving it that extra time really helps uh kind of steal it and make sure it's uh, well adhered to the canvas so I'm not really going to shout out my colors here because I don't know what colors you're going to be painting your rock, to be honest. Um, I've got just some grays, a uh, little titanium buff, some blacks, and some blues. Which I'm just going to sit over there. A little bit of water, but probably not a whole lot. So this is sort of like dry brushing, really just kind of adding some color back in to the rest of things. Let me get over here. So I'll put some black and some blue for a dark edge and then a light edge. And then probably a second light edge on top of the regular light edge, but I'll do that later. <laughs> so really what you're getting here is just a relatively simple layer of paint. You don't need a ton of paint, just enough to kind of keep the brush kind of moist. And then real lightly, just drag over top of that paste. That way you're darkening it, but you're also picking up the texture. Now if you scrub in, you're going to lose that, that variation because you're getting both the color on your brush as well as the underlying color that we used before. And you know, because it's me, I'm painting the edges. And the dark obviously won't show up quite as well as the light will, so just bear with me for a minute or two here. And again, the reason I'm not doing a big overhead shot for this tutorial is so you guys can really see that texture. If I did the uh, overhead version, you may not be able to see it as well. So giving you that, that a little bit of an angle is going to be really nice. Okay, that's not bad. I'm going to work a little bit in here on the bottom. Some of these other areas. just the gray and the buff. I think there's some zinc white here too or something. Yeah, that's what that is. But again, your, your your colors may vary. Also, with drying time, like I said, this took about six hours. Your drying time might vary depending on the relative humidity humidity of your working environment. 
So don't use six as a, just a baseline. Test it out. See see uh, how it's working for you and how long it takes to drive for you. But that's how long it took to drive for me, at least at least this week, anyway. Okay. So I've mixed that up. I'm going to use a little bit less paint on the brush. And then, again, kind of dragging pretty lightly here. I'm, I'm holding my brush relatively far down. A lot of times I'm, when I'm light, I'm a lot further back, but um, I still need to maintain a bit of control on, on the brush, so, so i got to get that edge at least. Using the corner of the brush for this. Up. So let me get this edge first. You can kind of see, start to see that already. There's that edge. My top. That's good. Now this is where the fun really begins. <coughs> So I'm going to drag all, a little bit to the side to get a little bit of variation in my bristles. And real light, drag over top. And all that texture work, all that stuff we did earlier, that's what comes up. And the smoother it is, the more of a stroke you get, more of that dry brush. But when you get these little peaks, these, this is the, the some of the best area to get. And the, the paint just kind of picks up on those areas. and I'm, I'm really angling my brush down to get a, a wider surface area. I can You can use a bigger brush for this. It really doesn't matter as much. It um, matters more for when you're applying the, the, the paste, but you know, for this it's really just about finding the, the, those little places where you put the gel or the, or the paste, not the gel. Gel is clear, paste is not. This is paste that we put down. And you can kind of go over your, you know, your darks a little bit if you want. Kind of mix that in. I'm actually gonna get some more darks in here. Mix it together a bit. And that acts as basically just acts as, as your details. Um, and you can kind of go back in, and I will a little bit with a liner brush and kind of clean things up a bit. But uh, you know, for the most part, that's really all it takes. And I've been painting rocks like this for the past couple of years now, and I think it's it's super fun, it's super effective. Um, provided you use it a little more sparingly. Uh, I did a piece uh, a couple years ago that it was like all of this. It was all texture, and it was like, that's that was a little too much, I think. So. That's it. Nice, simple. Uh, easy to utilize, for sure. But definitely not something you might think of right away. You know, it's definitely as its uses. It is. It is that little bit of uh, what I, ca I called uh, uh, earlier. It's it's paint sculpting. But it, at the end of the day, really looks pretty cool. So that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, if you learned anything, hit the like button. Consider supporting me on Patreon. Get subscribed if you're not already. And this has been from Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time. stuff. But yeah, that's this is how the the piece looked by the way when it was done. I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, I'll see you.